All right, YouTube, as promised, WikiLeaks did release Vault 7 material. It pertains specifically to the CIA, although it goes a bit further than that. Uh, the, uh, the material there is kind of alarming because it appears to indicate that the CIA not only has essentially bugged uh, all of the Android phones and uh, iPhones in the world to use them as uh, some sort of uh, attack upon their foes, but they've developed software as well that allows them to make it look like uh, if a hack occurs or something else, that it comes from any particular location or actor that they happen to want. Now the problem with this isn't if if you're you know dumb and you honestly and you trust the CIA with that uh, particular skill set, so be it. The, the problem is they were sharing this same material with other groups that are not necessarily as thorough in <laughs> keeping it safe, and now apparently other state actors probably have the same material. Oops. Uh, you see now the problem is, for instance, uh, the Russians probably have obtained this by now as well. If WikiLeaks has a copy, the Russians probably do, the Chinese, North Korea, Venezuela, and so forth. Uh, wouldn't this make it impossible for our own intelligence agencies to determine where an attack actually came from, even if we assume that they're being honest in their uh, analysis of any attack? For instance, let's say the Russians say, he he he, it's time to drag the United States into a war with North Korea. We're gonna make it look like they just conducted a massive, massive attack upon U.S. industry, shut down some electric plants, caused some grids to uh, go haywire, fucked up a nuclear plant, something like that. Something that would have a tangible effect that would be an act of war. Uh, the Clintonians, like Hillary, she stated during the election that any sort of penetration of U.S. military or government assets would be, you know, generally classed as an act of war and uh, warrant possibly even a physical military response. I don't agree with that. But if a foreign state were to fuck us up really good and, you know, cause entire systems to fail so that our economy screeches to a halt, so that our military is temporarily totally fucked up as far as its logistics go, yeah, that'd be an act of war. The problem is now, if this sort of uh, program has actually escaped from the, the grasp of the United States and has ended up in foreign hands, or if the basic gist was adapted by foreign states, there's no way we can tell where an attack comes from in the first place. And then WikiLeaks comes out and mentions, oh yeah, we're, we've become aware, Trump uh, has become aware of this uh, release and, it, and thinks it pertains to uh, what happened with Obama and the wiretaps and so forth. Well, if that's true, then it'd be even worse because we're about to see the biggest political shitstorm of all fucking time in this country and the bringing mass chaos into the streets, so to speak. Uh, because, again, it will be impossible for us to get the story straight. Because When something like this begins to exist, it makes it impossible to tell who, who done it, who's responsible for anything that happens in cyber warfare. So then, naturally, if, this, if truly there is some sort of evidence that this specific style of hacking is involved with an actual wiretap that occurred, it may not even be possible to determine what state actor caused it. It could be that the CIA spied on Trump Tower. It could be the, that the NSA did it. It could be that multiple agencies went totally rogue and tried to blame each other for doing such a thing. It could be that some other state actor penetrated one of these uh, groups and they did it. It's impossible to tell what we, what's going on. This is probably, this is way more worrying than the NSA programs. The NSA programs are, yeah, we spy on everything that you do. But at the very least, you know who's doing the spying. Now we don't necessarily know that. And, and those programs, by the way, the surveillance apparatus that they so helpfully built to, secure, to improve our nation's security, that already escaped into at least the hands of the Russians and the Chinese, and we know that to be the case. Yeah, they got their hands on all of that material. Other private, private groups of hackers managed to penetrate it. You think they didn't sell it to China and to Russia? Of course they did. They made bank on it. They probably also used it for their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, purposes as well, whether for entertainment or for profit, who knows. So we know that that happened. And if it's used in tandem, if, if they're able to mass deploy surveillance too, used in tandem with this sort of program, I would think it'd be impossible to tell who was doing it. 
Yeah, we've uh, we've sort of uh, watched the CIA in the last 24 hours get exposed as uh, opening Pandora's box. It's probably it's the worst uh, leak that we've had so far from WikiLeaks. This this dwarfs anything they released during the election in importance. Uh, it doesn't just pertain to oh yeah, there was some funny business going on with the Clinton campaign. Oh yeah, there was some funny business going on with Goldman Sachs. Yeah, there was also funny business going on with John, I eat too much pizza, Podesta. Yeah, that's very interesting. This is worse. Because it means that all of this leaking and all of the intelligence agencies have been completely compromised. It's almost pointless to even continue conducting surveillance if you can't even determine uh, where an action is coming from. If you can't determine who's doing the hacking, who's posting this uh, anti-American propaganda, who's doing X, Y, and Z. What's the fucking point of even bothering to monitor for it? And then they'll pr we'll watch. In the future, we'll find out. In the future, we'll find out, yeah, they developed some sort of patch for this, security-related. turns out they didn't even tell these companies, by the way, that they developed this. They uh, break through, I think it was WhatsApp and some of these other companies, they broke through all encryption, the CIA did, which means they, they shared a uh, disability with the FBI, the NSA, and so forth, probably with British intelligence. Other states, I, I would think that'd be a bad idea to give our, uh, our significant state secrets even to allies of ours. I'd think that something like that you'd want to keep as local as possible under lock and key under the highest stringency. And it looks like instead they shared it with a bunch of other states private security firms didn't even tell the corporations they were monitoring that they were doing so, that their services could be completely fucked if this material ever got loose. It then got loose, they still didn't tell them. And so other state actors have probably been spying on, and non-state actors too, by the way, all of this material. We've essentially handed on a golden platter our enemies you know, supposedly we're enemies with Russia. Okay, well, they presumably have this. Supposedly China's our, our enemy. They probably gave it to the North Koreans as soon as they got it. And the Russians probably gave it to, to Belarus, to uh, Kazakhstan, to Venezuela, and so forth. Yeah, so everybody has this software, and nobody bothered to tell U.S. firms that uh, this, this, this was going on. It's a great idea. You see, the problem is you've just made it easier for groups of people to attack the electric grid, to attack communication services, you know, whether it's just users or whether it's entire systems, entire firm, to attack our economy. The CIA has given them that ability now. Thank you. That's very helpful. It's, it's very nice to know that you could wake up tomorrow and the electric grid has gone down because somebody completely laid waste to it. They completely fucked it over because you were loose with your uh, with your software that you developed. At the same time, <clears throat> WikiLeaks, and this could connect to Obama in some way, uh, posted on their Twitter that apparently the CIA was celebrating uh, about their much larger budget. Obama was a friend to the CIA generally. Uh, and they were posting that animated image of, of Obama's face uh, over some, I think it's like a rap singer or something like making it rain and then like dispensing money everywhere. <laughs> My God, how cringy. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. It, you can tell that it's pretty bad because the media is uh, trying not to report on it. The the smaller firms, even like the left-wing ones, like HuffPost, they'll they'll report on it. They'll, they'll try to spin it to make it look like the Democrats had nothing to do with this. They didn't know it was being developed. They were totally ignorant as usual. Obama never knew what was going on. He didn't know what went on at the NSA. He didn't know what was going on with the CIA. He knew nothing about his uh, his uh, close friend, Hillary Clinton, and all of her allies using private emails for government business, using private service. He knew nothing about this. He's the, he's the see-nothing president. No clue whatsoever. Totally and, and utterly fucking ignorant about everything that went on in the United States that could possibly be construed as negative. I would think that that would uh, be a negative statement about Obama, uh, but Huffington Post and Salon and similar groups constantly trotted out. Something went wrong under Obama's watch? He didn't know what was going on. He's clueless. He was too busy doing other stuff. He was too busy dancing in Cuba or playing golf, eating a pineapple over in Hawaii. He couldn't be bothered. He had to have his off time, Jesus Christ. 
It's not like he's the president of the United States or anything like that. Now I think I understand why fucking Trump was so mad. I, I think it might have less to do with the wiretap itself and more to do with the situation surrounding the wiretap. No wonder the heads of all of these agencies are so uh, flabbergasted. Then the head of the DHS comes out yesterday and says, oh yeah, well, if Trump is saying this, he must have some evidence. Well, I, think he, I think we know where some of this evidence is from. We find out Roger Stone gets drunk, makes a tweet about, oh yeah, I was in communication with WikiLeaks through back channels, which I think any sane individual knew was happening anyway. Hmm, I wonder if he uh, discovered quite some time ago that this sort of crap was going on and uh, told Trump about it. I wonder if that's why it seems like things are so chaotic right now. Like uh, the whole rotten deal is about to be exposed, courtesy of Roger Stone, WikiLeaks, Steve Bannon, and everybody else in the Trump administration. I, uh, yeah, it's possible. Maybe that's what we'll see. It's, uh, but I mean, if you're talking about, oh, Trump had communication with Russia, wouldn't this CIA software also indicate that somebody who's totally mundane could manufacture a scenario in which it looks like he communicated with Russia for political reasons? Maybe uh, that's why Obama loosened the purse strings of an already ailing economy to pay more to the CIA. Or maybe he was just afraid that they would fuck him over if he didn't. You know, bureaus have a tendency to do that. You give a bureau too much power, especially in the sense of surveillance and espionage, yeah, uh, yeah, they spy on Congress, and then they hold it over their heads, probably. Why would I be surprised if that happened? It's not like any of the politicians are going to speak out against it, because then they get fucked. Well, there you go. You have a bunch of corrupt people, they're easily controlled, because they're corrupt. They get lots of shit to expose. And you don't get into the Senate or the House or into the seat of a governorship, let's face it, without doing a little bit of backstabbing. Being a little bit money-grubbing, generally speaking, it's a, a rare day when somebody honest gets a put in Washington, D.C. Whether they're in politics or not. Lawyer? Yeah, they probably didn't get there by being exactly a class act. Journalist? They didn't get sent to D.C. because they're not willing to do some yellow journalism, let's face it. Anybody there? Yeah, you have to be a little bit dishonest to be within a few miles of the mall, so to speak. I think New York City's probably similar. That goes for Trump, too. He's not a perfect individual. Of course he'd stab some enemy in the back to make money. If he thinks he can make a hundred million doing something that's slightly dishonest, yeah, he's gonna do something slightly dishonest. The difference being, I, I think a lot of this simply targets him because I, I'm starting to think that he uh, is quite genuine in his anti-globalism beliefs. If only for fiscal purposes, perhaps, or for uh, inflating his own ego because he wants to solve some of these problems. Uh, get our economy actually working again. I'm starting to think that he's being targeted by a massive scandal involving virtually the entire uh, outdated, uh, outgoing government or something like that. It's beginning to look like a, it's not a Watergate scenario. It's a sort of like a, maybe a John Wilkes Booth style thing on steroids minus the revolver or something like that. They're trying to, they're not trying to kill him. They're trying to politically assassinate him, in other words. I mean, it's fucking crazy. And then you have CNN and similar groups. Oh, don't either don't report on it, or they say, oh, WikiLeaks, which is run by a serial rapist in hiding for high crimes, says claims with no evidence that CIA developed uh, rogue technology. That'll be their headline, I guess. That's how dishonest they really are. Of course, uh, last night, I had one congressman on who dared to say, oh, yeah, 30% of domestic terrorists are refugees. Uh, and then they quickly cut him off. Now, this never happens to anyone who's saying nice things about the left, by the way. It's happened three or four times since the beginning of the year. It always has to do something uh, with somebody making a pertinent and accurate argument against globalism or multiculturalism. Oh, we lost the satellite feed. Oops, sorry about that. It was the TV gremlins. Ooh, hee hee. Yeah, nobody, uh, yeah, everyone will believe us because they're just so fucking dumb. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, WikiLeaks is doing a good service for this world. And the same people that'll drag him over the coals for this say, oh, we're indicating that Obama ever did anything wrong. He never did. Those same people loved WikiLeaks when they were reporting on the Iraq war. They loved him. Loved Julian Assange. He was, he was like their messiah. They held him up on a pedestal uh, beyond even people within their own actual like partisan core. Oh, Julian Assange, Jesus Christ, let us suck your dick. You have done no wrong. You shouldn't be in hiding. We need to pardon him immediately for exposing the crimes of the Bush administration. Obama gets elected, and WikiLeaks suddenly becomes their die-hard enemy. 
And he's still, Assange remains the enemy of the left here today because the left is part of this scandal. It doesn't involve Trump. That's what I think. I think it's a bunch of establishment conservative Republicans like McCain and Lindsey Graham in collusion with the corporate left, not, not the actual far left like the Kuciniches or Jill Steins. I think they're totally apart from it too. The corporate left and the corporate neocons got together, decided to bring full globalism into the world stage through, uh, through the TPP and similar things. They're getting exposed in all of their crimes and they're really mad about it. That's why they're always defending each other. Why do you think Lindsey Graham, John McCain, all these asshats, they come out and they're more concerned with someone who is supposedly part of their own party uh, and, and things he supposedly did wrong. And they never talk about what the Democrats are doing. They never talk about what some other neocon is doing. They just rather fixate on Trump all day. I think there's a reason for that. Maybe their fear of being exposed too. Oh, if we don't try to cover our asses here, uh, we could get dragged off into a prison camp for uh, traitors and, and for people who have committed sedition or something like that. Maybe that's the point. Maybe they're terrified. Maybe John McCain has to wear a second layer of uh, adult undergarments at this point. That's about all. Peace out.